Welcome to this Java tutorial. In this tutorial, let's answer a frequently asked question and also something which a lot of people need need to understand. Uh, what is platform independence? And why is Java considered to be a platform independent uh, language? Java is considered to be a platform independent language. We'll understand in this video why it is and how it achieves it through bytecode and how it achieves you achieves it through having uh, JVMs. Um, let's start with uh, the basics platform independence. What does that mean? I write some piece of code. I want to run it in a Windows operating system. I want to run it in Mac operating system. I want to run it in uh, Unix operating system. Uh, this is what is called platform independence. Basically, I write code once and convert it into some format which we should be able to run without modification in various different platforms. So basically, Windows, Unix, Linux, Mac, whichever operating system there is, I would want to be able to r run on it. And it's not just the operating systems, but also probably the uh, systems themselves use different uh, CPUs like one is an Intel based CPU and probably the other one is an AMD based CPU so irrespective of the CPUs irrespective of the operating system irrespective of the configuration of the machine I would want to be able to run a particular program uh, anywhere and that's what is called platform independence you would see that generally C is not considered a platform independent language because when I compile C program the output which I get is you would not be able to run it on all the machines so if I write some C program I have to like uh, the final out uh, final binary output of it uh, is different for different operating systems so that's the reason why C is not platform independent but Java is considered to be platform independent so we uh, like Java a uh, Java program once I write it I compile it into something called class files these class files are put in different jars so I can group 10 class files and put them into a jar and these class files and the jars we will be able to run these in any Java virtual machines uh, in any operating systems so how does Java achieve that let's understand what happens when we uh, write some Java code. So here is m uh, here is a programmer uh, X. He's a wonderful programmer. He loves programming and he writes a class foo. Oh, great! So he writes a class foo and uh, he does Java C on it. So he compiles it, and the output which comes out of the uh, Java C is bytecode. So when you do a Java C on foo you would see that the output which Java generates is a dot, dot class file. So this is bytecode. So this consists of instructions which are bytecode. So this is what happens in the like this is what happens when I compile a program. So when I compile a Java program, a bytecode is produced. Uh, and this bytecode, we want Java to be able to run it in any operating system. So what happens is, like, let's say there's a system dot out dot println in this, and the output or uh, bytecode contains the uh, definition for system dot out dot println. Probably it should put this in the memory and then print it from memory to the output. So that's basically what this bytecode uh, bytecode consists of: some Java representation of printing something to the output, but how you print something to the output is different in different operating systems. So how you print to the output in Windows might be different from how you uh, print to the output in Mac. So how does Java handle that? So what happens is in Java, what is present is something called a JVM. So this JVM, it is very intelligent. What it does is uh, it converts the output uh, like from the uh, Java C which is the compiled co uh, class file sorry which is the interpreted or compiled class file it converts this into a format 
which is understandable by that particular operating system so this byte there's a jvm for let's say windows there's a windows jvm which converts from this byte code to the format which is understandable to uh, the windows operating system there is another J a jvm which might be uh, like uh, a different jvm which converts uh, the same class file into a format which is understandable by another operating system so if there are 10 operating systems there are 10 different jvms so these jvms are different for different operating systems and these jvms convert the byte code to the format which that particular operating system understands so let's say i want to run this java program in any of the systems all that i need to do is install the jvm for that particular configuration for that particular os processor so i installed just jvm on my machine so if i have uh, let's say a Mac PC what I do is I first install a JVM and then I would be able to run this so the way Java achieves platform independence is by having a platform dependent JVM so the most important thing is JVM is platform dependent so a JVM for Windows is different from JVM for Mac a JVM for uh, Intel a processor might be different from a JVM, JVM for another processor a JVM for Linux would be different from the JVM from Windows but th these JVMs for that particular operating system so for JVM for Windows understand what understands what needs to be done to convert Java byte code to the uh, to uh, the Windows uh, understandable format so what happens here is uh, the JVM is platform dependent and it is able to understand the platform independent format which is the dot class so uh, I can run this class file as it is without changing in uh, without changing anything in different operating systems so that's basically what platform independence is and that's how Java achieves platform independence just to summarize uh, Java, when we compile Java code we get a dot class or a dot jar files or var files whatever these files you would be able to run them anywhere on any of the JVMs and these JVMs are different for different operating systems but the JVM for a particular operating system understands the byte, byte code which is the standard format and converts it into some format which that particular operating system understands so this is all about platform independence. Until next time, bye.